Hello friends, hope you are having a fantastic day today. So in this video, we are going to do an awesome lead code problem called sliding window maximum. This problem has been asked at tons of different companies. It is extremely well liked and also a lead code hard problem. So without any delay, let's get started. Now let's try to understand the problem statement for this problem. We are basically given an array of integer called nums and we are also told that there is a sliding window of size k which is moving from the very left of the array to the very right of the array so which means sliding min window is moving constantly now we are told that we can only see the k numbers of the sliding window and each time the sliding window moves one step to the right position now we need to return the maximum sliding window for every single sliding window that we have been able to find so let's try to see some example for this given problem so initially the window is going to be located at this position then window is going to keep on moving one step towards right which means this one is going to get eliminated and we would have a new window created like this same way this three is going to get eliminated and we would have a new window created like this for every single moment we need to return the maximum sliding window okay is that for this we will have to create another array where we are going to note that what was the maximum character for every single sliding window that we have we have been able to make so the very first sliding window is going to be this portion 1 3 and minus 1 which means the maximum value in this one is value number 3 so we are going to add value number 3 to our answer next this one gets eliminated from the given uh, input array and then we will have a new window that appears of this size which means once again the maximum value is going to be 3 so we are going to mark 3 as the maximum value next for this window now we have this value number 5 that is going to be the maximum window for the current given input so now we are going to add 5 to our answer same way we will also have 5 for this particular window as well and we will add 5 once again now we also get rid of this element and now we have this window to look after so in this case we have a new maximum value that is 6 and then in the end we will have this last window where it contains 7 as the maximum value and this is the answer that we will have to return in order to understand that what is going to be the maximum sliding window so this is what is expected of us to return for the brute force approach the way we are going to do is that we are first of all going to create a window of size k so suppose even in this case we are given k is equal to 3 we create this window then we iterate over every single element and we try to find the maximum element so we found maximum element as 3 so we mark that as the answer then we get rid of this one we create another window and once again repeat the same process until we reach to the very end and then we would be able to find the solution now in this case the answer works perfectly fine but the issue is for every single element we will have to iterate over three different elements to find the answer and every single time we are creating a new window which means the time complexity is going to be big o of n cross k which is an expensive time complexity so let's see that how can we improve on this one Uh, one major improvement that we can make for this our given input is that instead of every single time creating a new window what if we just use this logic of this existing window we already had and try to find the maximum value that we have already identified and then move forward and then play around with that maximum value that is one of the option and this is going to be an intermediary step that we are going to use in order to generate the optimal solution so that's why i'm explaining this approach the idea i'm suggesting is that let's say in this case first of all we have a well an element called max this max element is going to keep track of the maximum character that we currently have inside our array as the window okay and uh let's say that first okay currently we are at value number one which means we can only start adding the value after we have reached to the index value 2 so any value before that should not be added to the answer or should not be treated inside our answer array but we can still keep track keep track of the maximum element we have been able to find so far so the idea is that first the value number is 0 okay currently maximum value is null so we can add the maximum value we have been able to find so far as this value 1 then we are at value number one 
now once again this value is 2 so because 2 is greater than 1 so we will add value number 2 as the maximum element we have been able to find so far then we are at this uh, third value that is minus 3 uh, sorry minus 5 so once again the maximum element we have been able to find is 2 so we are amongst for this first window we will have to add one answer and that answer we can directly take from our maximum element so we can take value number 2 next we will have to add one more element so now we are at this value number 6 after at value number 6 this 6 is definitely greater than the current maximum value we had so we can add value number 6 as the answer for this one okay and now once again we will have to add the maximum value so we can add value number 6 over here once again we find value number 7 so we, that is going to replace our maximum value and then value number 8 that is also going to replace our maximum value so we can add value num these values like this and build an answer so you must be thinking that hey this looks quite straightforward then why is it even this a hard problem the thing is we actually intentionally I chose an input like this because this is a very simple input where we don't have any particular uh, issues but if we are given an input let's say now in this case currently we are going to put our maximum value as this value number 3 okay and then now we are iterating over for this first sliding window we will have to choose value number 3 but the thing is we are not sure which value number 3 we picked and in this case let's assume that this becomes a uh, value number instead of this being 4 this is 1 okay so let's assume that in this case so far we know that this is the 3 that we added but the, it could also be this 3 and now when we do move to the next element which 3 do we have to remove because we are not keeping track of the index value of the maximum element and that's why when our sliding window moves we would be confused with this element so that is a problem number one uh, the second problem that we can think of is that we are not dropping the elements as we are moving forward so every single time we move forward we will have to drop all the elements that have already passed the given existing window which means uh, the approach that we found is to use the maximum element is correct but the problem is that number one we are storing the value that is an issue because we don't know that what is the index position that can be fixed by storing the index position but second issue is that we are only too much focused on just one character meanwhile we should be focused on an entire window rather than just one character and the approach of uh, this window is very simple and very straightforward that at every given moment whichever the first element that entered inside the window would be the first element to be kicked out of the window when we move to the next window so using these two approaches what i'm suggesting is that instead of using a maximum variable just to store the value i'm suggesting that instead of this number one instead of storing value we store index values so index values will allow us to calculate that whether we are at the current window or not which means it would help us to kick elements out and second thing is that uh, inst uh, instead of only using one variable because we are using a, an, an input uh, of a window where we are continuously removing the previous elements which means we are uh, using the concept of first in first out for the current to maintain the current window which means we can have a queue where we can keep track of the values that are currently present inside the given window and we know the concept of queue is very simple it's first in first out so we can manage that on top of it inside the given existing window we don't have to worry about storing all the three elements we only have to worry about that what is the maximum element in any given window so we, what we can do is that for our given queue we will always keep track of the maximum element that we have been able to find at the very first location so that uh, we don't have to iterate over the entire queue to find the value we can simply do a peak operation to see that what has been the maximum value inside the given sliding window and now this should be able to solve a lot of the issues we were facing previously so let's understand the approach i am suggesting the logic is quite simple let's quickly take one example okay so let's say that this is the given input that we are dealing with and we are given that the value k is equal to 3 now i have created an array to restore our answer and i have also created a queue where we are going to store all the values of the given current window inside the 
uh, ascending order and we are going to maintain the maximum value as going to be the very first element inside the queue that is going to help us out a lot uh, once again i'm iterating we are going to store the index values inside the queue not the actual values itself so we can quickly navigate that what should be the current window size okay so i hope this these things makes clear and remember that since our given k is equal to 3 we can only able to start adding values after we reach to the index value 2 onwards okay and i'm also creating one more variable i just to understand that what is the current variable we are iterating over so let's say that currently i is equal to 0 we are iterating over which means this value now currently our queue is empty which means we don't have any maximum values so let's quickly add the add one value so currently our queue contains just one element that is 0 and i'm also writing the corresponding value 1 just for our sake of understanding okay now we cannot add anything to the answer until this point so we are going to move forward now once again we identified index value number one that contains value number three so this value is actually greater than the current value of the index position we have inside the queue which means that we need to add this three over here so we are going to add value number one as an index value and which has the corresponding value three and we are simply going to remove this value number one or this index value zero all itself why because for any given window size that we are able to create it is always going to be that this is going to be the maximum element so why do we even keep the non maximum elements inside the queue so the moment we are going to identify any maximum element we are going to iterate over the given existing queue to remove all the elements that are going to be smaller than that for that particular sliding window that is going to help us out a ton okay so now we got rid of this element okay now still we cannot add anything to the answer so now we are at i is equal to 2 position so currently this is value number minus 1 so minus 1 is actually not greater or smaller than the current maximum value we have inside the queue which means we are still going to add it inside the queue uh, as index value number 2 which contains value minus 1 but we, this would not be the first position and now since at this i is equal to 2 position is equal to k is equal to 3 which means we are at our first window now whatever the maximum element we have inside our queue at the very first position we are simply going to peak that index value and then go back to our actual uh, given input array and find that maximum element and put it in the answer array so now we are going to put value number three first okay now we are at index position number three so once again index position number three the value is minus three now what is the current maximum value we hence we have inside our queue that is index number one which means in our for our ith position what is the sliding window it is value 1 2 and 3 which means the very first element inside the queue we have is still inside the valid window so we don't have to kick that that value out that is number one thing we need to check next we need to check the value for index i is equal to 3 so this value is minus 3 so because this value is minus 3 it is less than the current maximum value we have we are going to add it normally inside our queue so we are going to add index position number three which is which corresponds with the value number minus three okay now and once again we will have to add the maximum value because now for every single value we are going to add one value inside the answer and once again for maximum value we are simply going to do a peak on very first element that is our maximum value and we are simply going to add it inside our queue okay now now next we are at i is equal to position number four so now we are at i is equal to position number four for this one the window size is going to be two three and four not one so one should be removed and currently in the very first element of the queue we have value number one so which means we are going to remove value number one right here and now okay now after this we are going to compare the value that we currently have for this value number four that is this value number five and we are going to compare it with very first element so since five is greater which means the moment we identify that the phi is greater we are going to check every single element that are smaller than 5 and we are going to remove all of them we don't need them inside the window because we are only keeping track of the maximum elements so now we are going to store index number 4 that contains value number 5 and after doing this we are going to once again add it to the answer so we are going to add value number 5 to the answer next is element number 5 that contains value number 3 so once again 
this particular value inside our queue index number four is still part of the current sliding window so now we are going to check the values so three is obviously less than value number five so we are going to add value number index number five or value number three inside our given queue uh, and then once again we are going to add value to the answer that is once again going to be value number five now we are at this position where the value is value number six and once again i just uh, for our understanding we are dealing with this window so uh, index values four five and six okay now for this i is equal to six uh, we will first check that whether four needs to be removed no it it can stay there for now now we compare the value so currently this value number six or the index i is equal to six contains the value number six that is greater than the index position four that contains value number five so we are going to get rid of this one and we are going to check all the values that are smaller than six so currently all of these values were smaller than six and we are only going to store index number six answer number six once again marking six as the answer and lastly we are at i is equal to seven so if i is equal to seven then the valid Q or the valid window becomes five, six, and seven index values. So the current index value we have inside the Q is six, which is still valid. Then we compare the value. So seven is greater than six, which means we are going to replace six with value number seven, and which also coincidentally have the value number seven. And then uh, because this is the maximum value we are able to find, we are going to also mark it to the answer. And in the end, we are just simply going to be done with our existing loop. And that's it. This is the whole approach and this is the whole solution that gives us the desired answer in a single iteration on the given input array. And all we are doing is just sometimes we are doing repeated work inside the queue to change the value of the array. But apart from that, we are not doing anything. So this is a wonderful approach to solve this problem. And this is actually the optimal solution. If we see time and space complexity for this approach, the time complexity is actually going to be big O of n uh, because we are simply going to be iterating over this given input array once which is pretty awesome and pretty convenient. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. And in terms of space complexity because we are using an extra Q so that is going to be big O of k because at max this can be of size Q, nothing more than that. So let's try to run this code and uh, so now let's try to so now let's try to build the coding solution for this one. Okay, so this is the coding solution. First, we are checking for th some edge cases that if the given input is equal to null or if the given k is equal to less than zero, then we can just simply return a blank and a or an empty array. If that is not the case, first we add we initiate an variable to store the the length of the array. Then we also create a new value to store the result of the given array. And then uh, we are also initializing a DQ to store the Q values that we just discussed in the solution. Now we are simply creating an array to iterate over the given list. Very first we are checking that are there any indices inside the current window that are exceeding or that needs to be kicked out. For that first we check that if the given Q is not empty and the very first element or the largest element inside our given Q if that is less than the value of i minus k plus 1, if that is the case, then we simply pull that element out. If that is not the case, then we simply iterate over all the values that are smaller than the given current value. If we identify that scenario, we simply keep on iterating all the values and keep on removing them. Then we simply have to add the value to the queue and we need to find the maximum value that is currently located at the very first location inside the queue to our array and we simply add it after the value uh, i is i becomes greater than the value of k minus one that we just explained and in the end our result array should have been populated so we can simply add all the values and return that so let's try to run this code Okay, seems like our solution is working as expected. Let's submit this code. And our code runs extremely fast compared to a lot of other solutions. Uh, once again, the coding solution is present on the GitHub repository that we have created. So you can go and check it out from there. Thank you.